Good afternoon and welcome to this session for an intersession, uh, interface with Mr. Tobias White from Berlin, Germany, well-known director. I hope I am not too wrong with the pronunciation. Uh, please uh, excuse if I, it has been so. Uh, he will be in conversation with Dr. Anuradha Kapoor, who has been former professor and director of the National School of Drama. And we are extremely happy to have both of you here with us today. And a very warm welcome to you both. I request Professor Vaman Kendre to formally felicitate and greet the guests. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Uh, I now request uh, Vandana, Vandana Vashisht to give us a brief introduction, which can then set the tone. And then Dr. Kapoor will be in conversation with our uh, guest today. A very warm welcome to all of you, and uh, good afternoon. Tobias Faith, Executive Director of the Schaubühne Berlin, has studied directing at the Academy of Dramatic Arts, Ernest Besuch. He has been working at the Schaubühne since 1999, first as Head of Artistic Production since 2012 as General Manager. From 1998-99, he worked as a Production Manager of the Barache of Duchesse, Theatre under the artistic direction of Thomas Ostemerer and Jens Hiliche. <laughs> I, I really tried <laughs> to be correct. <laughs> Dr. Anuradha Kapoor, former director of National School of Drama, New Delhi, uh, has taught and directed in India and abroad. Um, she has written widely on the theater, and her book, Actors, Pilgrims, Kings, and Gods, The Ram Leela at Ramnagar, is published by Siegel, 1990-2004. We all know Dr. Kapoor, so I'll keep it very brief, as directed by ma'am. We welcome you here, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for uh, inviting me to be here, and thank you National School of Drama, and thank you Tobias for being here and being part of a conversation. We were in fact talking outside a little bit in preparation, or what shall we say, we were doing a bit of a rehearsal, but we found that uh, uh, the best thing is to actually talk here together. Um, I had a series of thoughts uh, which I think perhaps uh, might interest us as, as a set of people who do long, uh, have a history of the theatre which is very long, which is both uh, very, how should I put it, very important, significant and difficult history in the sense that, you know, we could either see history as a continuity in the kind of theatres that we do, or we might see it as continuity and ruptures. And depending on where one is placed, in a, in a, in a, in the way that we imagine ourselves, I think sometimes the ruptures are stressed more, and sometimes the continuities. But one of the things that I think we constantly do talk about, and it's also part of our, uh, in a way, uh, discussions that happen in a school like the National School of Drama, is uh, about the question of Indian theater and Indian theaters and Indian nesses. And I wondered whether there was something like that which you might uh, 
have to think about or are part of a discourse around theatre making and especially in terms of the kind of projects you take in Shaoguna? Well, first of all, I, I would like to thank uh, you for having me here. It's really a great honor uh, to be on this stage at the National uh, School of Drama in Delhi. It's my first time in India and in Delhi, so um, I'm full of impressions and I suck it all in. Um, and uh, it's quite an, it has already been quite an experience in the past um, uh, 36 hours and I'm very much looking forward to presenting a show uh, that we've made at Schaubühne here at, um, uh, in your theater, in the Theater Olympics. Um, and we're very thrilled to see how it works here. Now to your question. Um, it's an interesting question because, um, as a matter of fact, uh, at first I would say, no, there is no such um, discussion at German theater um, as opposed to a non-German theater. But what is interesting, when I come to think of it, um, uh, the Schaubühne has always um, conceived itself as an international theater. Um, uh, which uh, the question is what what does that mean? Um, uh, it first means that we have lots of international partners. We present our work all over the world, uh, which is a great honor for us uh, uh, to travel through um, all continents with the d various. Uh, productions that we have, so this is international. But actually, when you look at it more closely, there is also a great, um, uh, the artistic work uh, where we come from uh, has started with a great influence from abroad, um, actually very specifically because uh, this Baraka was also mentioned where I first uh, worked as producer with Thomas Ostermeyer together, um, was very much influenced by the Royal Court Theatre, which I think you know over here. Um, and, the, and, and their work uh, with and for authors, and, um, and this aspect of a contemporary author writing about um, his world, his environment, um, uh, um, his topics, uh, her topics, um, is something that uh, is very, very, uh, very important for the artistic work of Thomas Ostermeyer, but also the artistic work of Schaubühne. Uh, so there is an international influence. There's always been an international influence, and we may talk about this uh, a bit more. But at the same time, um, uh, the, the focus um, on issues, themes, topics is at the same time very local. So um, we want to, uh, we, look, um, we look at Berlin, at Germany, at Europe, at ourselves in in this context and try to deal with those topics and um, try to um, write about them, to make theater about them. And, um, and funnily, this local view um, um, is drawing um, or is getting an international attention. So artistically, we're very local, I could say, but, um, but uh, the international aspect is very important. Now, the German, the German aspect, um, there is no, in, in, our, in, in the Schaubine, in our theater, there is no discussion about uh, being German or not German. Actually, um, in Germany, there is, there is a notion of you don't really want to be German. Um, uh, uh, you rather not talk about being German. It, of course, has to do with our history, um, and um, so there is there is not this this discourse about being a German theatre, um, but um, the German theatre in 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 um, 
you know, the different, there is a very rich um, theater culture and theater um, uh, structure in, in, in Germany. This is, in a way, very German. Uh, there is over 260 theaters in Germany with a structure, with actors, with technicians, producing a lot of shows. So this is a very German theater, and as, as, as opposed to that, we are in that structure, even though we are um, um, a private, um, legally we are a private company, um, but we still get funds from the city of Berlin. Uh, so we have a very similar structure to those state theaters, but um, as opposed to them, we try to reach out, we try to connect, and, um, and, um, and that is acknowledged by the, by, the, by the politicians, by the city of Berlin, um, but not to an extent that we think is necessary, because I, we think that in our world nowadays, we, we just need to um, uh, we really need to uh, build up international co uh, cooperations more and more and more, and um, and of course that takes up resources, money, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And um, uh, politicians tend to look at only their little context and what co comes out from uh, uh, um, what comes out. For them, that was a long answer. Sorry. Long um, question. No, thank you very much. I, if I might, actually, I think you've, uh, you know, you've pointed to some things that are really sort of resonate a great deal here. I would like very much to know a little bit about when you were saying the structures. I mean, the structures would mean actually building as well as the structure of of companies and that there is the structure across uh, Germany. So does the structure in some senses actually uh, point to certain kinds of plays being done by particular kinds of structures or would you say the structure remains um, uh, not identified by, uh, well, let's say does the structure of it affect the work? Oh yes, yes, a lot. It, you may even say it defines the work. Um, and then the question is to what extent or in, in, what, in how many different ways. Yes, a lot. And um, well, the Schaubühne, and maybe I just speak a little bit about, about the structure of the Schaubühne because it's a kind of unique um, theater. It is a, as I said before, it's a private company. It was founded uh, 62 by some crazy students in West Berlin, uh, wanting to uh, to make theater. And then it grew and grew uh, bigger and bigger, and became more prestigious and and more famous, and uh, and received as a private company money from Berlin to make theater. By now, we uh, we are still a private theater. Um, uh, a non-profit uh, um, company, limited company, um, uh, but we receive um, a good portion of our budget from, from Berlin. And uh, we have a building that the city of Berlin gave to us. Actually, um, uh, they built it for the Schaubühne back in the 70s, and it opened 82. It has a lot to do with the history of West Berlin, East Berlin, um, because West Berlin was a deserted area. Everybody left uh, during the 60s, 70s, and so the federal government of West Germany kept, um, put a lot of money into West Berlin and um, kept especially culture uh, very high. Um, and uh, so there was lots of money, and, w and, and the Schabin has certainly profited from that. And, um, but also, of course, um, there was artistic, um, there was a great artistic um, uh, um, success uh, back then with Peter Stein as artistic director. And, um, and this, uh, so this is like the, very briefly, the historic back, uh, background of, of, of uh, Schabühne. And, and now we have this building, uh, which is given to us by the city of Berlin. It's a very nice, wonderful old cinema building. Um, uh, 
uh, designed by Erich Mendelssohn in the 1920s, and it was reconstructed um, for the purpose of a theater with uh, multi-flexible spaces and uh, quite fascinating and nice. And, um, and besides the building, we have um, 250 uh, people working for the Schaubühne. There's technicians, there's art departments, there's workshops, and there's also an ensemble of actors. Um, and um, that structure waits for uh, an artistic leadership uh, saying what to do with it. And of course that defines um, the work in the sense that uh, you, need to, um, you need to program that theater structure um, with something that fits to that. So we have to produce ourselves. We have all these technicians, all the workshops, they can do wonderful um, work, they can build wonderful sets, etc. Um, then we have actors and they want to be on stage. So we look for plays for the, those actors. For example, Osina Lardi, who you will see tonight on stage, is one of our actresses in the ensemble, and, um, and she's a, a, a very um, uh, prestigious actress. Um, and of course, if you have somebody like that in your ensemble, you look for work for this particular actress. And we have 35 actors, and they all knocking on the door of Thomas Ostermeyer and say, what am I going to do next? Tell me what I... So they need an artistic perspective. And, and we look for those actors. But that's... So that, that defines a lot. And of course, the choice of actors um, uh, defines the work. Um, and actually, there is a big discussion now in Germany, the uh, question of diversity. Um, uh, do the actors in our ensembles of, of, of the different theaters, do they actually represent our society? And of course, you know, largely they don't. Um, and um, uh, because there is only certain, it's a big topic now, you know, who, who will be trained in, um, in the theater school? Uh, like yours, you know, um, uh, do people from um, a working class uh, background, um, uh, uh, do they get the chance to be trained from, an, uh, from a migration background, do they get the chance to be trained? It's actually a social question. And, um, and of course, um, over many, many years, the selection who uh, who, who gets to be trained, who gets accepted in, in, in acting schools was, was a social question also. Not deliberate, but like um, it, it happened like that. And of course those people now in the ensembles of, of German theatres, um, they come out of acting school. And, um, and now there is a shift uh, um, and there is a big discussion about you know, who, who should be on stage and what kind of policy the theatres um, uh, follow. Um, and, um, and, and of course, when that changes, then you look for other, then certainly also the thinking of the, how to program your theatre changes. So that is one aspect. The other aspect, of course, is is the artistic director, Thomas Ostermeyer, in this case, together with dramaturgs. I think you don't know what a dramaturg is. It's like an artistic advisor to the artist, to the artistic direction on the one hand, and the artistic advisor, collaborator, who then works with a director during the course of a production. A very important person because he's he's they are engaged. Uh, they're they're hired by the Schaubühne, by the theaters, and then they um, collaborate with the directors who are hired for certain productions. And, um, and of course, these groups of people, th uh, uh, they have a discourse about our times. And, and then they choose directors who they think fit best to our program. And um, they can be very diverse 
at the same time, there is a core of what a certain theater stands for and the Schaubinus stands for. And, um, and, uh, and then they choose plays, um, either they, uh, plays are commissioned uh, to authors, then directed by other directors, to authors who direct themselves, like Milo Rao. Milo Rao is, uh, was commissioned to do a project, write a play and direct the play. Um, um, or um, we also do classical plays, but maybe that's another question. But yes, the structure defines largely what we do. And, and just to say this uh, uh, once more, um, and maybe this is something also that interests me coming here, what kind of theater structure do you have here? The theater structure in Germany, this, you know, these 240 people employed by the Schaubühne to do, do work is something very, very wonderful. Um, and of course, that, that can only be possible uh, because there is quite a lot of money uh, put into that structure in order to create art. And I think this is very important because only then I feel um, you can be free um, in your artistic um, choices. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think that's really something that, uh, you know, what you said is, I think, critically important, uh, especially, uh, you know, at the moment, for instance, in India, we would be having a fair amount of discussion on what is the meaning of state funding, what is the meaning of being commercially viable, what does an actor or a theater maker who comes out of a school like the National School of Drama, what would her skill set be? And I think that's critically important partly in some senses because National School of Drama is uh, one of the premier institutes in terms of teaching. So what does uh, a school, like when you said the uh, Ernst Busch, uh, connects uh, to certain um, companies or a graduate from the Ernst Busch will go into a, a, a theater school, uh, I mean a theater company. I, what I was interested to know is what is the connection in some senses? Are there connections that are made between the kind of theater training that happens in various institutions and the choice of a repertory company, of a performer, and a performer of a repertory company, are there very clear lines like that? Or would you say the, the skill sets of actors who are from a training institute or various training institutes are similar? Would there be a kind of standard sort of actor training that produces the young performer at the moment in, in Germany? and? maybe even city-wise, so that they could go to all kinds of companies, or would there be more affinity between schools and Yeah, that? yeah. Um, well, there, is, uh, there are strong connections between theatres and theatre schools in Germany in general. For example, there is a, a, a theatre school um, in Munich that is literally next to uh, the Munich Kammerspiele. Um, and, and, and they actually collaborate very, very closely. Um, and um, in Berlin, it's a bit different. There's two big state um, uh, theater schools, the Ernst Busch and also the University of the Arts. Um, and uh, they have a certain reputation, a very good one, the Ernst Busch even better than the UDK, uh, the University of the Arts. Um, and they collaborate with the different theaters in the sense that, um, uh, that for example, with the Schaubühne, uh, the theater school Ernst Busch um, makes a, a co-production with us, with their students, and they do a, a project in our studio theater, and then they play it in repertoire for at least a year up to 50, 60, 70 uh, performances. So they, uh, they get the chance in their third year, which is uh, the second to last year, um, uh, they, they get the chance to work kind of under professional uh, circumstances. And of course, um, that's also the, uh, the chance for us 
to meet the students in a way. Of course, we are always invited to see their work at their school, and we all um, also go there. But if you if you um, if you have a student uh, or a, a group of students work um, on in a in a in a production, then you you meet them differently, and and uh, and they get engage differently in that work, especially also over the course of, of that many performances. So that is a connection and that doesn't only happen with the Schaubühne, that also were, uh, um, happens with the other theatres in, in Berlin. And of course, Thomas Ostermeyer is also a directing teacher at the Ernst Busch by now. So there's also a connection. There is, you could say, um, there is a strong link and uh, many of our actors in the company come from the Ernst Busch. Um, at the same time, uh, there are, there is, uh, we, we also um, say, you know, also other schools are very, very important. And to some extent, we think that other schools uh, focusing on other training methods are may even be more interesting in to some extent or in some focus um, uh, as opposed to the Ernst Busch. But, um, but there are links in both ways. Um, and I think that is very important. I, and maybe that is even not happening enough. Um, the, the influence of theater makers into schools, I think, could be um, could be could be bigger, could be greater. Um, sometimes schools have the tendency to, at least um, from what I know, I don't know about this one, of course, but um, um, to kind of um, enclose themselves in their method and um, and not open up to other influences that times are changing always and um, and I think you you need to um, take in some influences at the same time without losing yourself and for example the directing school um, is um, uh, going through from from what I hear and what I observe is going through many different um, uh, developments also because they're they're taking up too many influences sometimes so it's Anyway, the exchange is very, very important, I think, yes. If I might just uh, carry on with one more sort of question on this area. So what would be the kind of young actor that the, uh, the repertory or the, the Schaubühne would want to see in their company? Would there be particular kinds of skills? As you say, there's a relationship of this kind, let's say, with the Enstbush? Well, um, I'm not... Um, no, there is no, no particular kinds of skills that we're looking for. As a matter of fact, sometimes, uh, sometimes we see skills, but we don't see characters, personalities. Um, and, um, of course, um, as uh, the older you grow, the more personality you have, um, and that's absolutely fine. But at the same time, um, uh, we believe that the personality of an actor is extremely important um, for the artistic work. So sometimes you have great skills, um, but you want to... Um, uh, you actually want to uh, come to the point where the skills are there and are important, but are not there for their own sake. Um, and, and that is something that um, often, especially f uh, f coming, uh, uh, students coming from Ernst Busch, um, you see only skills or too much skills. And then you have to work on on personalities, and Thomas Ostermeyer, uh, as a director, uh, is very very committed to that more and more, um, and um, finding out finding finding trying to find um, uh, uh, 
a way for the actor to come to himself and discover himself um, uh, to, um, to, for the personality to add to the character that is, that is played on stage. Things that I think which you said and which one knows through the work that uh, Schaubühne does is what you called an internationalism and also the fact of having different, uh, I mean looking at the now where you know one has to see uh, a kind of democratization of uh, entry into, um, into both schools as well as in, in, uh, in companies. So, is there something that you might want to tell us about that kind of um, interest or ambition within the, within the company to deal with the kind of international aspects of being in the world today, which mm. uh, whether, whether it's the kind of certain sorts of populism, the problem of refugees, I mean things which affect us all across. But, uh, Absolutely. Well, the interesting thing is that that um, um, very internationally very successful production like Enemy of the People, um, uh, uh, a show that actually was presented here in Delhi and in, in uh, um, Kolkata and in Chennai uh, two, two or three years ago, um, yeah, 15, um, uh, that w is extremely um, successful all over the world, r literally all over the world. and. Um, and of course, you don't plan that. And this, this is the interesting thing. Also, compassion, same, um, same situation. You, you want to do something, and that uh, you means the director, um, the dramaturg, the theater. But, um, and it, it has to do with uh, how you see the world. Um, and. Um, and for example, Enemy of the People, um, uh, Thomas was interested in, in this, um, in this um, critic on capitalism that goes beyond the point of uh, the democratic pr uh, uh, processes and uh, 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 f goes actually into populism. Um, and um, and then he made the production. He inserted this public speech um, uh, um, from a from from a communist kind of communist, very radical group from France. They wrote um, uh, the uh, upcoming uh, uh, the coming uprise um, and, and, and a a paper they wrote un, an, uh, anonymously, um, and they took. Uh, uh, he took that uh, paper and put it on stage, and it criticizes capitalistic way of life, and um, and then it goes into discussion about our society, and um, and what is very interesting is that the audience um, applauses the 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 speaker. Um, because it is an analyze of capitalistic life and, um, and uh, we're all fed up with it or we all see the danger at the same time we, we benefit from it. Um, but then um, the discussion goes about, well, is it, is, it, is it correct to, what's the democratic procedure here and what, how, how, do we, how, do, how do we decide on how we live? And, um, and over the course of the of the last five six years, um, uh, this has this production is still on, and it has changed a lot. It has it has changed. Not we play it the same way, but the uh, um, the world has changed, and so it responds differently to our world. Now there is extreme populism in in Europe, in America, um, um, etc. So. You find a different way, and you don't. You, this this process you cannot control, or, and you cannot plan. It just happens, and um, a little bit the same with the compassion here. It was it was not intended to be a production about refugees. Um, it was uh, intended to be a production about um, about Congo, actually, 
Um, and then the refugee crisis happened. And then uh, Milo Rao, as, as director and author, reacted on that together with Usina. Um, and then this came out, and it's uh, and and this refugee crisis has been um, going on ever since, and is has a great impact on Germany. So what I'm saying is, you don't plan these international um, uh, careers of productions. You um, you begin thinking about a problem that affects you as a director, as a writer in Berlin, in Germany, and if it, if it hits a nerve, it may trigger something that goes way beyond our borders. And this is the way how we, how we uh, like to think about uh, work. If you plan something, and I'd say this is going to go internationally, this is, it, it probably won't work. I agree completely. And I was just uh, interested just to take that forward in terms of enemy of the people. So if it's traveled such a great deal, and some of us would have seen it and some not, how do you actually localize it in terms of the problems that a city or, a, or where it goes? Is there, when the audience participates, how does it get localized? Is it, there a conversation prior about where it's going uh, in terms of localizing some of the problems that might be talked about? Well, there is, um, it doesn't, it, we don't really localize it. So we say this is the production as it is and then it relates to the problems in the specific country and town. Um, and sometimes we, we, we localize it just a little bit. Um, for example, when we were when we went to Istanbul, there were uh, just these Gezi protests going on back in 2013, and um, and and we just put in um, in one scene there was a politician, actually the uh, a collaborator of a politician who um, who kicked a demonstrant, um, um, a, a person demonstrating, he uh, lying on the ground and he kicked him with his foot. And um, in one scene, we put this in, in a, in a fight between the two brothers. And of course, this was recognized immediately. Or you put in a phrase, and then you recognize it. But we don't change it generally. In Enemy of the People, what, what changes is the discussion. When you open to the public, and then you get into a discussion about the society, um, uh, the, the way of life in that specific area. Of course, that is very much determined by that specific area. And when we were in New York City, it was a very, um, it was a very intellectual debate on how democracy works and how it doesn't work. In, um, in, um, in Argentina, it was the whole audience was shouting and, um, and, and, and was asking the artistic director of the festival to stand up because they thought that he is, because he, wa he used to be the cultural minister, he was the bad guy. Um, and and, and they, were, they were shouting and, and, and the people, our, us, we thought we had to finish the, uh, um, uh, the play and just leave it there because they were so engaged in each other that we were out. Um, in Moscow, half of the people in the audience came on stage um, and just started the debate. And at a certain point, the actor said, should we just continue and forget about the play? Um, so that happens. So, uh, but in general, we don't localize. For, also, this play tonight, of course, it's about Europe. It's about the refugee crisis in, um, from Syria uh, coming over Turkey, Greece to, to uh, Germany. Of course, we leave it like it is. Um, um, and, and, then, um, and then you can make a transfer um, to whatever reality you have here. We have another production that just opened in September uh, Retour à Reims, which is talking about the extreme right populism in, in France and in Europe, and we played it for th three weeks in New York City, and, um, and the audience loved it. 
even though it was talking about France and Europe and not about um, about Trump. Um, uh, but of course, they they knew the production was also talking about that. But you don't you don't need to localize it really. Thank you. I think that does make uh, many things clear, including, you know, the word is, uh, the two words are very often used and sometimes lose their meaning, this the kind of participation in a debate. But that would necessarily, as you said, if in, in Russia you have the people coming up onto stage, then you have actually changed form very, uh, you know, pertinently to that place. So I think that changes greatly. I want to just ask one another set of questions. I know the Schaubühne does a, huge, a large uh, sort of part of its uh, work is also looking at classics. Mm -hmm. So are there any, uh, would there be, I mean I think in some senses the Greeks present a constant uh, conversation between rights and the state and so would there be any kinds of particular uh, work or interests in terms of the classics? Do they fall into some kind of uh, dialogue with the present which is very distinctly your theatre's interest? Well, the question always is when we do a, classic, um, uh, a classical play, uh, what does it tell us now? And, um, and so we don't do classics because it's, they're classics and, and they're wonderful plays, but we do it because we think that play speaks to us right now. And um, uh, Thomas Ostermeyer found Ibsen as one playwright um, back in the 19th century, uh, late 19th century, um, writing about, about um, the bourgeois life back then uh, th that can very, very uh, well be transferred to our times. And, and then he literally adapts it in language. Um, he doesn't really change plays, but he adapts them, uh, uh, mostly in language, and an enemy of the people in that speech, for example. Um, so Ibsen is one kind of classic that we like, have liked to adapt. Um, another one, of course, is Shakespeare. Shakespeare is um, a universal playwright. And, um, and uh, sometimes it's also a, quite a nice situation that you have to translate Shakespeare. Uh, because in that process of translation, you adapt by making a new translation, you automatically have to adapt um, to our times. And we, our long-term artistic collaborator, writer, and director, Marius van Meinburg, has done all the Shakespeare um, translations um, for us. And it was extremely important to have those new translations. Um, and they're not, um, I mean, they're contemporary language, but they're not, um, you know, there's, there's no modernism in that as in there is a, a mobile or anything like that. But um, it's a very, it's a very um, contemporary approach to that um, poetic language. And, um, um, and if, if we stage that in a contemporary way, like Hamlet, like Richard, um, there, is, there, is, there, um, there is lots of contemporariness in it without being, um, you know, nowadays. Um, so we like to uh, create um, uh, associative spaces, and and you can you can you can uh, 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 recognize yourself in that play again. And actually, uh, when we toured with Hamlet throughout the world, um, this was also a very nice experience. How how a play responds in different places. We once played in Ramallah. And uh, when you hear that dialogue, to be or not to be, um, and uh, whether uh, I should take weapons and fight or kill myself, this is become so real. Or 
this simple sentence, Denmark is a prison, this becomes so real. And this is this kind of reality we're looking for, also for Germany. Of course, Germany is not a prison, but still there are other aspects that you can find. And um, so there is always the attempt to find something contemporary in those classics. And if we don't find it, we don't do it. Um, for example, very funnily, we, we, we don't rarely do um, uh, Greeks. Uh, they're wonderful plays, really wonderful. We have done one Oedipus, by, uh, which was staged by uh, the Italian um, director um, uh, Romeo Castellucci. Um, and, uh, but he is a theater maker who works a lot with visuals. And, um, and he uh, implanted this play into a monastery, um, a Christian monastery. And uh, so it, it became something completely different. Um, Thomas Ostermeyer, for now, has not found an approach to, to Greeks. Um, uh, so, but this also shifts. Thomas Ostermeyer has now found an approach to Chekhov. He hasn't done that for years, but now he has found something. So this is always the question of what, what can we find in a, in a certain play that responds to our uh, reality. And this has a lot to do with the fact that we think the author relating himself or herself to the reality, the social, um, the political reality around her, uh, us um, is always the center of our artistic work. This just brings me to one other thing that you mentioned. So that means if you do, let's say, an Ibsen now, is it trans every time it's a different is it translated for the company? Yes, yes, that's that's the point. Right now, for example, when we... There's a big discussion about Wild Duck right now. Um, you know, a play everybody knows, wonderful play. But we discuss and discuss, yeah, well, but how, how can we tell this now? What does this conflict mean? What does that constellation mean? Um, how, uh, uh, Back in Ibsen time, it's socially connotated in a certain way. Uh, you, you, this doesn't make sense today anymore. How can we change it? What do we have to cut out? What do we have to adapt, change? Uh, but the, these changes, at least when Ostermeyer does it, uh, these changes are always very close to the author. Um, uh, we believe that um, we kind of want to um, uh, step into the author's eyes and look at what he was trying to tell back then and uh, what he would tell nowadays. But it's always a specific adaptation and also new translation, uh, which means um, the specific words are changed to nowadays language. Tell us a little more about this kind of thing, about the specific word being changed uh, in the sense, I, I know that you know, it'll have to move from one to us to English, but what kind of change would it mean? Well, it, it's, it's, it's really, literally, Thomas Ostermeyer, he's our Ibsen director, so we don't have anybody else uh, directing Ibsen. And so him and his dramaturg, uh, Maris van Meinburg or Florian Borchmeyer, who adapted, um, um, who adapted Enemy of the People, they, um, they keep reading different translations um, and then they say, well, I would say it like that, I would say it like that, I would, I would go... So they, they try to, to find a language um, uh, by themselves. They, they kind of rewrite it. Um, but what they don't do, uh, we were just talking about this um, uh, uh, adaptation of um, um, of Jung Gabriel Borkmann by Simon Stone, as an, an Australian director, and he he adapts in a very he really rewrites and makes you know, very contemporary settings as well. There is mobiles, there is a TV, whatever, and Thomas. Uh, uh, doesn't really do that, even though there are 
contemporary characters on stage and they use mobiles, etc. Maybe um, if necessary, or but but they don't. Uh, he's not looking for a, a, a kind of superficial uh, modernization, but uh, he's he's more looking for a very contemporary language. Like how would we? And Ibsen is a realistic author, naturalistic author maybe, and so the question is how, how would we, how do we speak today? Um, and, and then in the process in, uh, of rehearsals they change things. Yeah, yeah, sometimes an actor would say, oh this is, this sounds a bit awkward, um, and then they change it. But um, uh, Shakespeare is different. Shakespeare is different. There is Marius von Meinberg, he translates, and that's, that's an artistic, poetic act. And that is, that is not changed. So it would be changed in, uh, there would be certain texts that could get changed in rehearsal. Yeah. And yeah. with the collaboration of the actors. Yes, yes. So it is about how it sort of rolls off, or how it gets embodied in some senses by the yes, actor. Yes, yes, exactly. So is that a kind, would this be a very uh, regular kind of, um, not regular, but is that something that this kind of collaboration happens in most of the texts, let's say of Ibsen, as they come or in Ostermeyer's work? Yes, in all, all work that is, uh, that is a realist, that, that needs a realistic um, uh, way of acting. Yes, then yes. Um, in, in all work, which is Shakespeare or a new contemporary play that has been written in German, you don't, you don't uh, change it because you, you look for, uh, I mean, this is a challenge. Uh, sometimes a, um, a text, um, a script uh, seems awkward, but you want to find out what is in that text. Um, but if it is an adaptation, a new translation, and you are looking your, for a modern language, then, then this is a process. I was also just um, wondering uh, if, you know, in some senses, uh, in a country like India, there would be very many relationships within the country between languages and, you know, between various uh, regional languages, Hindi, and those are always fraught with this kind of thing, is how it comes off the tongue, how does it work with an actor. So I think it's, a, it's something that is, I think, very close to uh, most theatre making here, where, you know, this quite, uh, uh, how should I say, uh, a, a relationship with language that's very real and about today. It's not necessarily about having to retain a certain faithful aspect to it. Because in any case, lots of the, I mean, all international aspects of what texts get played here, or even regional translations, what's the, what's the real one and what's the translated one, those are all gray areas. And I think, in a way, if uh, the actor also collaborates in that, it makes uh, for interesting theater making. We, we, we have a very interesting um, uh, example uh, uh, I come to think of it uh, because you say uh, the different languages, regional languages, uh, uh, which are, I think, quite different uh, here than in Germany. In Germany, you have different dialects. They differ quite a lot, but it's still dialects of German. And, um, and one author, uh, Udun von Horvath, he lived until uh, 1938 um, and died at the age of, no, 1937, at the age of 38, he died, um, uh, already being killed by um, a, 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 a tree falling, um, falling down. Um, and he was a very famous uh, German author, South German author, coming from Hungary, um, actually. And he wrote in dialect. At least the thinking of the characters are very South German in in its in in this dialect. And Thomas Ostermeyer just rehearsed a production, um, uh, Italian Night. It is called. Uh, we had to interrupt it because uh, an actor fell ill, and we have to premiere it. It was supposed to open now, and of course, he really wanted the actors, or he wanted Bavarian actors, because this. 
language is so um, important um, because it's not just the language, it's the thinking beyond, uh, that, that determines the language. And we do have some Bavarian actors in our company, but of course not all of them. And then um, he was forced, um, because he loves these actors, he was forced to um, cast um, actors who are not um, Bavarian. And of course he doesn't make them speak Bavarian, that doesn't make sense. But um, uh, what he tries, like one is from uh, from Saarland, which is a region um, uh, in, in the west, um, southwest of Germany. So he, he takes that dialect, or one comes from Berlin, and he takes that dialect, and of course things change, but what he's looking for is to give um, this kind of personal note um, and this um, uh, that is so important to those characters uh, coming all from a very uh, um, uh, uh, working class um, uh, background um, and not upper class and um, and and so he he adapts it in this way I think that's again something that is a very real uh, consideration for any theatre making uh, um, here in in our country. Um, I was just wondering one other thing. I mean, through Prari could advise me. Could we open uh, the discussion to question? If, if you, yeah, if there's any questions that you would like to have about, I think the things that we've been talking about are things that are prior to our seeing the play, so there is a wider ground to cover about, uh, again, translations, about, about casting, about actually the structures of, of uh, uh, companies. If I might add one thing and ask a question, what is the way that, uh, and this is totally different, is about the structure of a repertory company. How are, uh, are they, uh, are they kind of, time bars to actors within a company? There is a certain contract of a certain kind, and do they get, uh, uh, um, does it, there is a certain time that an actor can be with a company? Is that any sort of, well, is there, structurally anything like yes, that? Yes, actors always have limited contracts. Um, it starts usually at at least two years, maybe three years, and then the, uh, uh, the contracts extend for um, uh, for another season each year. Um, uh, uh, you have to actively end a contract if you want to end it, otherwise it is just extended year by year. Um, year by year. Year by year. Year by year. Um, um, and um, yeah, so, but it is important that um, it is, there is the possibility of a, of a limit because um, artistic partnerships change yes, and after a certain while the actor might say no this is not my place anymore this is not my director anymore directors change sometimes actors just lose their directors because they've gone someplace else and then they're they're without work and then they have to look some uh, for another place and also sometimes um, which is mostly a much more difficult process um, when, uh, when a theatre, when an artistic direction has the feeling that um, this partnership is not fruitful anymore. Thank you, Tobias. Is there any questions that you might want to bring up here and we can talk about them? Any thoughts that you might want to share with us? Please. In between, you said something about uh, the skill set of the actor and also the uh, personality of the actor. So, I wanted to ask, what what does uh, I mean? Uh, what does the actor have to do with his her personality while playing the uh, character? Or are you basically saying that uh, how he is as a person is also important? as important as how we can do the 
Um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to answer these questions um, and replacing Thomas Ostermeyer, um, for example, for, for whom uh, this question is very important, but uh, probably just as important to Milo Rao, who, uh, who is here in, 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 in this festival. Um, um, uh, so, I will try to give an answer. I'm, I'm not sure uh, if, um, if, if this is uh, a good answer. Um, I think that um, uh, as, a, as, a, as a spectator, um, you want to, you, uh, when you see a play, when you see a character, um, uh, you want this to be, uh, you want to have an experience. And to make that experience as truthful and um, as possible, um, uh, the actor has to fill his play with reality. And um, the best source for that is your personality. Um, because if you have experienced something, and I, I'm, I'm not saying that anything you play you have to experience, completely bullshit, but if you connect certain things that you have to um, play with experiences, um, uh, that may be similar, that may be relate to that in some way, you fill it with your reality. And um, if, the, if the aim is to, to make believe as, as best as possible what you are representing on stage, um, I think this is a good way to do it. Um, I don't know if you understood. Yes. Yes, I, I hope I understood um, your question. I, I think the, the difference really is um, uh, that Shakespeare's writing is a very poetic writing and there is, um, um, and you have to, as a translator, you have to find certain answers to the original uh, writing. Um, uh, um, there is rhymes, there is, um, there is um, uh, um, certain rhythms to the, uh, to the, um, uh, to the lines and, um, and you have to find an answer to that. Um, and, um, and when this translator, in this case Marius von Meinberg, has found its, his way of dealing with that language, um, uh, then it's a creation of its own. It's, it's, it's a play, it's a writing. And as an actor, you have to deal with that. And um, 
um, it's a it's a completely different process than when you take an Ibsen and say, okay, now um, this is. Uh, I want to make it very realistic. I want to make it like I'm in my own kitchen and quarreling with with my wife, um, and I want to make it very realistic. This kind of quarrel. Um, that's a different, and this is Ibsen, and it it um, and and um, and Shakespeare is um, another level of language, and and uh, and you have to you have to um, find the challenge in the language, and you have to find the reality in that language, um, uh, but. Um, uh, it's not about um, making it um, uh, to your own nowadays language. I think that is a difference. Um, I don't know if that is um, if that is uh, giving you a good answer, um, but it it's a tr it's an attempt. <laughs> I'm not sure if I understood the first question. Uh, can you repeat it once more? Uh, uh -huh. So, uh, the, the performance which is made, uh, uh, it has that form. Uh, so, do you reach the form uh, in the process of adaptation, a certain kind of a structure of how the play will be looking? Is it already there when you choose a script and adapt it, or it comes after that? Well, yes, it comes after. Um, so first, you you choose a play, then you then you make an adaptation or um, a translation, um, and in this process, of course, you find out the f uh, on what you focus in a play and what your interest is, and then. And then eventually you find um, um, you you think about a set design um, and and uh, when thinking about a set design, of course, um, it's much determined by by um, what you want to tell um, and how you want to tell it, and um, and that that um, evolves uh, then the form. Um, of that uh, particular production um, uh, evolves. Um, and um, the second question is about adaptation and translation again. Um, and uh, something that, uh, can you specify the question uh, in relation to what I already talked about? Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Translation of just the language or what else changes in that? Yeah. yeah. Well, um, well, a tra a liter a, like a real translation is um, maybe something that I was talking about with Shakespeare. So we have a person who is Marius van Weinberg and he translates the play. Um, and then Thomas Ostermeyer, for example, takes that play and directs it in that translation. And uh, as I said, it doesn't really change anything. Um, 
and then there is um, uh, there is another. It's a it's more an adaptation. Um, for example, if you take Nibson or Chekhov or even uh, a German author like Horvath, um, what I was uh, talking about before, or Schnitzler, who is also an Austrian German-speaking author, and there is adaptations in the sense of, of course, you make cuttings and you make editing, like what scenes you take out and what, what you live in. That is one adaptation, but of course there's more to it. And that means that you take the language and adapt it to our nowadays language. And that, that only happens really um, with the so-called, what we would say, so-called realistic plays. Um, and when you take an, a director like Thomas Ostermeyer, this, this is a very delicate process of taking the original, maybe even in Ibsen, a translation of the original, and then transforming it into another language that is our language. But there's others to be on, I, I mean, to be, you know, it's not only Thomas Ostermeyer who works at the Schaubinen, but you have Milo Rao, for example. Um, um, and like Milo Rao, he didn't do that with compassion, but what he sometimes does is he rewrites a play. So you take a play, and then you take the structure of the play and the scenes, and you rewrite it on the dramaturgy of the original play but with nowadays characters, um, with, uh, with nowadays conflict. So you kind of change the play, um, but you stick to the dramaturgy of the play. That's another process that, that, that can be used. And we have, we have used it um, uh, as well, um, but yeah. Uh, one is that uh, you talk about what you're looking at us. Do you also have any sort of expectations from your audiences? And uh, the second doubt is, I'm, I'm sorry I'm bringing this up again, but it's really stayed with me that uh, I didn't understand what you mean by experience. I mean, I don't understand how one can judge the other person's experience, so if you could elaborate on that. Okay. Um, yes, we do think of our audience. Um, uh, um, but more we observe our audience. So we observe the audience reacting to our plays um, and of course that has an effect on, on future decisions. Um, uh, for example, uh, many years ago um, we did plays that um, dealt with um, uh, the uh, that, that dealt with, with characters at the edge of our society. And um, personally, I think there were really great plays and great productions, but um, we didn't find an audience um, for that. And um, when we shifted our perspective to the middle class, um, then we found an audience. It's a bit simple, uh, simply said, but in a way there is some truth to it. Um, and of course, if you make an experience with certain plays and, and see how they respond to, um, how an audience responds to certain plays, then you, um, uh, then you uh, learn from that and, and that has an impact on future decisions. Sometimes you, you uh, make a, a decision for an artist and um, you know that this is going to be difficult. Uh, um, the audience is not ready for that or is not used to uh, this kind of aesthetics or topics or whatever. And then, um, and then you decide nevertheless uh, to uh, produce that artist because you think uh, this is very important. Um, and then you make horrible experiences um, sometimes, and you say, "Well, it was a it was a nice try, but you we can't go on." Or you think, "Well, actually, 
you have to have a longer breath and um, and then keep uh, the play in repertoire but not very often um, and then you gradually build an audience uh, for that so yes we do think of our audience okay this other question I think is um, something that um, goes uh, um, I don't know how to um, uh, how to how to I understand that there is doubt, and of course, if you act a murderer, you don't have to be a murderer to act a murderer. No, of course not. Um, but um, don't you have to try to think of how a murderer would um, would look at the world? Don't you have to kind of um, understand the perspective of that um, uh, specific character and, the, and in order to embody that, uh, that character in order to, to, make, to make believe that this is real and that is not just acting. Um, um, and the question is, and I think this is a method, methodological methodological question of acting and I'm actually even I was trained as a director I uh, worked since uh, for many years as a producer so maybe I'm not such an expert in that and maybe you're a, an even better expert in that um, but at least what I would say is how how can you achieve as an actress as an actor to um, to um, uh, to come as close to that um, situation in which the character is in as possible. And, um, and one, one way is um, to find something um, in your own reality um, uh, that kind of relates to that. At least that is one uh, method, um, but maybe this is something that 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 you can also comment on. <laughs> it's I, it's one of the biggest questions. It is, and I was just going to say it's a question that seems to have a different avatar every some years, and I think that uh, perhaps the the is what, for instance, Tobias has said, the methods by which you go close to the thinking of a character might be very different. But the fact that you have to is uh, common to different kinds of acting methodologies. And it would be the idea that how can you, what you do on stage must actually seem to be, um, this is a, you know, value laden word, but since we use it a lot in the theater, truthful. And to that extent, it should, it should be clear why somebody is doing an action. And I think that even if the action itself is confused, it should be clear that there is a confusion in an action. Uh, in an action. And how you go near to it would be different processes. And I think they would be differently uh, dealt with even in different productions. And an actor may actually find a process which she may use every time and sometimes not find the answer and we'll have to find another process. But I think it's actually something that seems to be uh, uh, fundamental to the process of being on stage, I think. And so it's a big question and it has long answers. So I, I don't know anything. I, um, I think it started when I talked about per, uh, personality, That's right? right. Um, and, um, and, uh, and, and, and this question about skills and personality, right? And um, uh, when, you, when you think of the kind of uh, basic idea of theater, a person on stage telling a story, um, and how this story is to told, um, then I think um, the greater the personality is of that actress, of that actor on stage, telling a story, the bigger the experience is for the audience. Um, and this is um, maybe, uh, this is maybe what I mean. 
Um, and it doesn't have to, and I, maybe I, I'm not sure if, if, if you understood it that way, at least this is not the way I would, I would, I would like it to be understood, is that you have to, um, of course, yes, you have to be truthful, but of course you have to have skills. And you, and, and you don't, um, for example, Lars Eidinger uh, in, our, uh, in our company playing Hamlet, um, he steps out of the character in it, he, uh, he plays ro uh, roles as the character, as the actor. You don't, you don't, sometimes he's the actor, Lars Eidinger, sometimes he's Hamlet, sometimes he is Hamlet playing a character, and it always changes. So there's lots of skills, but what is, what, what makes it to an experience, what makes it a great theater experience, um, a very touching experience uh, uh, with uh, emotions that drag you away, make you weep, make you laugh, make you forget yourself. Um, I think in the core of it is an actor who, um, who has gone a long way with our company, by the way, so I know him so well, and he has really grown. He's always had skills. Um, great skills, but he has grown in his career to become a personality on stage. Um, and this is what, what carries you away. This is at least what I think. I don't know. Maybe you still have doubts, which is absolutely fine. And I think um, everybody has to have doubts, otherwise you can't <laughs> get anywhere. I think uh, the liberty uh, um, of, uh, of an adapter or a translator can be, can vary, can be very different. Uh, sometimes the liberty of a translator is very, very big, um, and sometimes just as well for the adapter. Um, um, uh, uh, I, I wouldn't say one is bigger than the other. Um, it just really depends on 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 what uh, um, on what uh, is the task uh, maybe, um, and uh, if the director is the adapter and uh, the translator, um, uh, I'm not sure what um, what can he, what is the liberty of that director. Uh, well, of course, there's a great liberty. Milo, Milo Rao is a, is a director who writes his plays and sometimes, as I said before, rewrites older plays, other plays, um, and adapts them. And of course, that is maybe taking the most liberty um, uh, because he is... Um, uh, he is following his idea um, very radically as a director, as an author, and as an um, adapter. And there is no other person that he, um, or no other authority that he um, that he would accept in that process. There is, there is, there may be a play. Um, there may be. A, a subject, there may be a topic, but he takes full liberty um, to just take it and use it um, uh, for his own um, sake. Um, yeah. We can have one last question. 
before we wind up, is there anybody who would like to ask something? Well, thank you very much, Tomas, for a wonderful uh, set of questions that you raised. And as I take her word, many doubts, <laughs> which are always, uh, I think, very creative to be uh, dealing with. And also, we, uh, I think, the affinities as well as our shared concerns about, you know, languages, about uh, about authorities, as well as. Uh, freedoms, I think something that we all as theatre makers and theatre students and theatre teachers constantly battle. So thank you very much for bringing this up and thank you all for being here. Thank you. And formally I would thank both of you for a very illuminating discussion and taking us through a journey of many, many internal areas of theatre practice which we will think about and keep with us. Thank you so much.